where it's just sort of expected that the biggest games released will all have mind-bogglingly realistic graphics, text-based adventure games can feel pretty outdated at this point. Why go out of your way to play a game where the main thing you do is read text on a plain backdrop when we have countless story-based games now all set in fully realized 3D worlds that you can actually move around in? Well, I think there's still a certain charm to games that you need to use your imagination with to get the most out of them. And the game I'm talking about in this first episode of Steamin' Through definitely leans into that idea. Developed by Caroli's Dixius, Desert of Ice is a horror mystery text-based adventure game at heart, but it also features a minimalist pixel art style so you aren't forced to stare at a black screen the whole time you play it. Set in a remote town in the middle of the desert, the story is about a character with amnesia who over the course of the game learns who he is, what he was doing in the desert before he lost his memory, and the unsettling if predictable truth about the people who live there. The way you experience this story is by typing commands into an ever-present text prompt at the bottom of the screen. Even on the main menu, you don't click play to start, you have to type in the word play. That's a nice touch. So with such a high focus on using text prompts, you'd think the game would be pretty flexible on what words it would take from the player to advance things, right? Nope, not really. While it is good about detecting spelling errors, there were tons of times on my first playthrough when I would get to a new area, type out a command that should theoretically work, only for a message to pop up telling me that I don't actually want to do that, all because I used a verb other than the one the game had been programmed to accept. Fortunately, there is a hint system present, which boils down to typing hints in and being given a complete list of commands for the screen you're on, that makes it so you'll never truly get stuck anywhere. Picky commands are a pretty common issue with this genre, though. What does this game actually do with them? Well, considering it's a little under half the length of Scorsese's The Irishman, not a ton. Steam says I played Desert of Ice for a total of three and a half hours, and I spent at least two of those hours following a guide to get all of the alternate endings. So from beginning to end, it only took me 90 minutes to beat this game. It is very, very short. Now I don't have a problem with short games, I'd much rather be left wanting more of something than wanting something to be over with already. But Desert of Ice feels like it's rushing itself along. The story takes place over multiple days, and one day a circus rolls into town and you get involved with the circus magician and have to help some of the other acts out with their problems. This is all building up to nighttime where they actually perform together, and when that happens, this is what you see. An empty big top tent with a single sentence dedicated to describing how amazing the show was. Wow, it's like P.T. Barnum came back to life and personally conned me out of my money. A benefit to the game being so fast-paced is that it makes playing it again easy. When you know what to do, you can burn through it in less than 10 minutes, which is pretty satisfying to do. Learning to get through it quickly is also essential for getting all six endings. I won't give away any of the endings, but as tends to be the case with games like this, I just so happened to get the best one on my first try, and I'd be hard-pressed to say I found it satisfying. And it didn't help that the other endings wound up being increasingly unsatisfying versions of that best one. I know it's a common trope with horror writing to leave things off on an ambiguous note to imply that the monster could return or whatever, but on top of the pacing, having the story not really wrap up just felt like a cop-out to me. So, I've been pretty hard on Desert of Vice so far, but this game does have its fair share of stuff that I really like. The most obvious thing to point out is the art style. I don't think I've ever seen another game go for a look that's quite like this one. You could show me an image from this game five years from now and I'd immediately know what it's from. The harsh lines between different shades, the extremely simplified drawings of people, the reused color palettes, for how basic the actual drawings are, everything looks great. Also in terms of presentation, there's the soundtrack, which might be my favorite part of the whole game. It's not something that you'll be humming days later, but every track matches the area it's paired with perfectly. The title track and police station track are the standouts for me. This game is definitely more creepy than scary, but the music makes sure you're always just that little bit tense. And of course, there's the plot itself. 
Like I said before, the game takes place over several days, and each day has its own mandatory and optional events for you to deal with. It's a pretty linear narrative overall, but there are a couple of choices you can make that directly affect the outcomes of some of the characters. There are about half a dozen major players in Desert of Ice, and only one of them will always finish their story the same way regardless of what you do, so that's pretty cool. Overall, the writing isn't worried about having events make total sense because it focuses on creating memorable moments for the player. And these moments are indeed what make the story memorable. An interaction as simple as the sheriff coming to the motel you're staying at to talk to you feels like so much more than it is thanks to a bunch of clever little decisions, including forcing the player to write a response to this situation with no clear right answer in sight. And on the flip side of that, you have the opening of the game where you're standing in a massive line of people who are willingly throwing themselves off the edge of a cliff. I guess they must all be friends. This game has a strong atmosphere which it never loses for even a second. That is by far the biggest compliment I can give it, and also the main reason I'd recommend it to somebody. It's also got a fairly compelling story, even if I don't think it comes together all that well in the end. But consistently finicky command prompts and a short length that feels like it cuts off half an hour too soon hold it back from being a real hidden gem on Steam. It's a close call, but I don't think you need to check this one out unless you're really interested in this genre. Out of 10, I give Desert of Vice a 5. If you like what you've seen in this video, you can find the links to Desert of Vice in the description. Otherwise, thanks for watching, and may your power-ups be plentiful.